Hey everyone, welcome to another electric playthrough. My name is Rob and today I'm going to be playing Bad Dudes. Now, I am not a speedrunner or a professional gamer of any kind. I'm just a guy who thinks himself a bad enough dude to rescue the president. Speaking of which, this is this is probably my favorite opening for any NES game ever. It's it's awesome, it's straight to the point, and it totally sets up the tone for the entire game. So here's the first level. The basic concept is you just walk around punching and kicking ninjas as quick as you can. Now this game is actually a pretty tough one. It's a game that as a kid I never made it past the first uh, few levels. Now, oh my god, getting all these gray ninjas. So the gray ninjas, they throw either shurikens or caltrops on the ground. Uh, the only way to avoid damage is to either drop down or to punch the projectile like this. You just basically just spam the attack button. And deal with all these guys. The blue ninjas are your basic grunt enemies. Red ninjas drop items. Now red, gray... Red and gray ninjas, as well as the swordsmen, take two hits to go down, or a fire punch. Now, a fire punch is done by holding down the A button for a few seconds. The fire punch is interesting. So here's a swordsman. Fire punch is interesting because not only does it kill the enemy that you hit directly in front of you, but if there's an enemy behind them, I guess it sends a shockwave backwards about half a screen and kills them too, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we're coming up on the first boss here. And it is Karnov. Now, Karnov actually originated as the protagonist in his own game called Karnov. Uh, I don't know why they made him a villain in this game, but his pattern is pretty simple. Basically, you just drop down, wait for him to raise his arms up, jump up, charge a fire attack, and then punch him before he's able to land. And he'll just knock back every time. Very easy. And I'm sure there's other ways to beat him, but that seems to be the safest and easiest way to do it. Alright, stage two. We're on the back of the dude truck we saw on the first level, those ninjas jumped out of. That's an auto-scroller, so basically you just need to fight off ninjas until you get where you're going. Now, I like to use this gap here between the trucks to... Uh, force ninjas to have to jump up to fight me right in that same spot or to jump over as opposed to being able to just run straight at me. Gives me a slight advantage. Now, as you can see, I killed that red ninja and I picked up the nunchucks here. The, there's two weapons in this game. There's nunchucks and the knife or the, the dagger, whatever it's supposed to be. Now, they both do the same damage and you would assume... See, it's soda here. That refills your health. You would assume that the knife does more damage, but really they do the same. Uh, I actually prefer the nunchucks because they have a longer reach. Uh, the only downside of the nunchucks is to block uh, the shurikens or um, caltrops thrown by those gray ninjas there. Is to drop down like that. You can't block them if you're standing. So, so if you see a gray ninja and you want to block a projectile, turn towards them, drop down, and just spam that A button. Or kill them before they come up. This thing has a pretty long reach, so the quicker you can dispatch of the gray ninjas, the safer you'll be. When you start seeing the cab of the truck, that's how you know you're getting close to the end here. The short guys right here, you need to duck down to smack them. I love the dudes written on the side of the truck. I don't know why the ninjas would write that on the side of their own truck, but it's awesome. Alright, now, this level 2 boss is extremely easy. You just want to stand on the hood of the dude's truck, crouch, and just spam your nunchucks, or whatever weapon, or your fists, or whatever, and he will just keep doing this. He will just jump straight up into it, And 
There you go. I'm bad. I'm bad. Yeah, the best soundbite in any NES game. It's beautiful. So every time you beat a level, not only does it refill all your health, but you get a one-up. It's the only way to get one-ups in this game. So, as far as I know anyways. So yeah, uh, every time you beat a level, it's, it's really nice, especially after a tough boss battle to get a full health refill and a one-up. It's one of the few mercies this game gives you. Now right here where this little drain is, um, if you were to fall into the water, it would do damage to you. The same thing as falling off the truck, falling into the gap wood. It doesn't kill you, it just does damage. And just like later on, you'll be on a train. It's another place where you're going to have to avoid falling through gaps to avoid damage. But I'll point that out when we get to it. See, there's a dagger. I just avoid that since I have my nunchucks that I prefer. Now, the sword guys, whoa, yeah, they do they do some damage when they hit you with that sword. Basically, you just want to walk under them and uh, turn around and smack them as they land. But that's just for the blue ninjas, the gray ninjas with swords. They, uh, when they land on the other side of you, they crouch. So if you try and turn around and smack them with whatever, they will not, uh, you'll miss. And they'll hit you with the sword from below. So you want to turn around, duck, and then hit on the gray swordsman. All right, this boss, he will not attack until you approach him. He just hangs upside down, but when you get close, he drops down and immediately, see right now he's invincible, but he splits off into a bunch of ninjas. So what I do is fire punch the first two and then nunchuck, fire punch, nunchuck. And if you nut fire punch him, he will immediately end the cycle of his attack and you won't be able to do as much damage. So what you want to do is basically just nunchuck him until he doesn't let you nunchuck him anymore. Or you can do one, two, oh, well, one, two, and then a fire punch would be ideal to uh, kill him a little bit quicker, but he's not really difficult enough for that to be a huge concern. Finish it off. I'm bad. I'm bad. Yeah. All right. So that was stage three. All right. Now we're in the the forest. Start throwing a lot more enemies at you. Another dagger. See with these guys, you want to turn around and smack them or else they'll get you from, from below. Ugh, and the fire guys, I think you have to kill them with a fire punch. I'm not sure, but um, a regular punch isn't going to do it. These little guys, just crouch down, give them a smack. Most boring cutscene ever. Okay, here we go. So there's a second level here to play with. And the dogs here, what you want to do is get within a close range and then drop and then just start spamming it. Because uh, they will just run back and forth and do a frustrating amount of damage really quickly. Push up and B to do a big jump up to there. There's another set of nunchucks, which I don't need. And you gotta be careful when you're trying to block projectiles with the nunchucks. When you're pushing down and tapping A, you don't accidentally pick up the dagger. Get 
we go. Alright, fight some swordsmen. See what I mean? You walk underneath, turn around, duck, smack. And for another long, boring cutscene. There we go. All right, boss battle time. This guy, don't let his size fool you. He's very easy, very predictable. He, uh, see that kick? Okay, so first punch, he does a little tantrum arm drop thing. Second punch, drop kick thing. Uh, they both do a ton of damage, so it's best to just let him do his thing, take a step back, and just continue the pattern over and over again. Easy peasy. Do not be intimidated by his size. Get another health refill and a one up. Here's the train I was talking about earlier. There's much bigger gaps here, so it's easy to fall down and take unnecessary damage. So, um, you know, mind your footing. One, one thing about the movement in this game is that uh, your, your bad dude here, you notice when he walks, he actually takes steps. It's not just, uh, oh, see, damage. That's frustrating. Uh, he actually takes steps instead of just moving around like a normal video game side-scroller does. So it's easy to misjudge where you are in regards to a ledge. And like I did, mis mis uh, misjudge your jump, fall down, take damage. So this level basically just try to oof keep your sides as clear as possible. Just manage back and forth, back and forth. Use the gaps to kind of control enemies approaching you. If you have the nunchucks, you're in a much better place. Now for this fire guy, I like to fire punch that guy, and it kills the fire guy as well, but then you have another, ugh. Oh, another fire guy comes up behind you, so you need to have your fire punch ready to go to take him out as well. Careful not to kill your red ninjas close to the edge because they will drop, they will fall down and drop their items on the ground, and you cannot get to them very easily. Another Karnov fight. This time he comes back and he's like a zombie, or I don't know what he's supposed to be, but he doesn't have nearly as much health, but he can still box you in against the edge and do a lot of damage to you. So take him out as quickly as possible while still managing the other spawning ninjas. Oh, God. There we go. You really use a soda. This game can get very nerve-wracking if you're low on health. Especially when Grey Ninjas start showing up, because sometimes you'll do your drop and spam the A button perfectly, but a shuriken or something will still make it through your little your little bubble of defense. There we go. And a soda. Yeah. All right, Whew, kind of takes the pressure off there. So you want as many lives as possible, especially coming up in these last couple levels. Now this guy drops a clock. I used to wonder what the clocks were for in this game, because if you notice at the bottom, there is a timer. The clock gives you more time, but I've never really had a problem with running out of time, especially in these auto-scroller auto levels. But what I think the purpose is, is that I think it was an effort to keep the score at the bottom from becoming trivial because enemies just spawn indefinitely in this game. If you stand still, it's a little bit different for an auto-scroller, but um, 
Hold on. So for this guy, what you want to do... Oh, he got me. You want to stay in close. I like to punch up, punch down, and then whenever he jumps over your head, it's the only time in this game where I do up punches. You just want to stay in close, because if he hits you with that mace, he does a lot of damage. Up, 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 down, 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 down. Punch, 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 punch. Oh, we both died. Huh, I guess it didn't take away a life. Um, anyways, like I was saying, on a regular level, enemies just spawn indefinitely, which could... You could potentially get an infinite score, I guess, or max out the score. I don't even know what that would look like, but um, having a timer makes it so that you can't do that, is my guess. Not that I know anybody who cares about the score in these old games. Okay, so this level throws a lot of enemies at you, and there's actually a lot of stage hazards. You'll notice right here, oh, come on. Right above me are these stalactites, or stalagmites? I'm not sure which. I think stalactites. This one right here is a little bit different colored. When you get close, it falls. So you need to keep your eyes up for that. Drop down to avoid the dog. Another stalactite there. Oh, man. Alright, more nunchucks. Nunchucks are very handy in this level because you get a lot of enemies coming at you and the quicker you can knock them out the better. Get a couple of these ladies, knock them out with the nunchucks, and then sit through another long downward scrolling cutscene. Okay. Now with the Grey Ninjas, you can also drop down and they will just run away. Oh. Oh, come on. Alright, I'm gonna throw a bunch of these guys at me. And give me a soda. And another scroll. I don't know why soda. I don't know if it's supposed to be Coca-Cola or what, but... Now, there's another move in this game that I don't really ever use except for right now. It's the spin kick. And basically, you do it by walking in a direction and pushing A and B at the same time. Um... So yeah, it gives you a little bit extra oomph when jumping over this spike pit right here because it's very annoying to fall into a spiky pit. It does a lot of damage. Oh, oh see? Yep, there I go. Now for these, you can either trust your stupid footing and do a short hop like that, or you can do a mega jump with your up, up and jump combo. Oh my god. Okay. These little monkey dudes, wait for them to jump at you and just give them a quick little swat. Jump, swat. And then we descend deeper into the cave. Alright, now. Stalactite. Oh, come on. And I die. Come here, come here. Oh, I was hoping to get his dagger for the boss fight. Alright, for this stalactite, you need to do a... Oh, yeah. Jump halfway across. It's easier to do it with a tall jump. Oh, come on. And uh, then just pull back to make it drop without hitting you when you land on the other side. Grab your soda. Now this boss is very difficult, and I'm probably going to die because I don't have a weapon. But what I like to do is when he jumps, try to meet him on the ground oh, with a with a low kick. Yeah, a spin kick actually kind of did something. Nope, not that time. Just stay on him. Don't give him a. Uh, Give him a chance to 
There we go. Alright. One death from him isn't bad. And we're done with the cave. Next is the ninja hideout, the final level. This one's pretty tough. There's lots of enemies and it's a pretty long stage. And also there's a boss rush. So um, you're going to see all the bosses again. But they don't have as much health, so that's another another mercy of bad dudes. Get the dagger. Wow, there we go. What's fun about the dagger is you just kind of poke people. Little face pokes. Get some more of these. Now, here we have a bunch of ninjas hanging from a rope. What I do here is I charge up a fire punch, and then as soon as the first ninja touches the ground, boom, kill all of them. Boom, all of them. I like this artwork on the wall. Dragon Gate. For some reason, they needed to separate that into two words. Ooh, nunchucks. Oh. And we get some swordsmen, a blue one, and then some gray ones. Oh, yeah, there you go. Under, turn, duck, smack. Under, turn, duck, smack. This is a long one. Phew. Okay, and we're back. Drop down, same thing as before. Fire punch, all of them. Fire punch, all of them. Just stay on this top level. Just keep moving. I think if you kind of slow down there, a bunch of ninjas spawn on you. So just keep moving. Keep that from happening. And here starts the boss rush. Starts with Karnov. It's not, uh, it's not too bad. Once you get through this one, and then we have the big guy again, which you can, with a little practice, make it through without taking any damage. You go up the elevator and refills all of your health, as if you just beat a level which is pretty nice. Of course, you have the the harder portion of the boss rush to get through at that point. But all the bosses are easier than the first time you fought them. They have less health. Come on. Then here we have this guy again. Same basic idea. You want to fire punch, smack, smack, smack. One, two, three, and then he does this deal again. End it with a fire punch. And then we have this guy. The mace guy, he's much easier this time. I like to stand here on the edge. He starts doing this hoppy thing. And then just fire punch him. He will do this weird across the stage attack thing right there. But he only does it once. You just continue on again right here. No problem. Okay, and now this guy is hard again, but not quite as hard if you have the nunchucks. Ugh. But after you beat him, it's on to the final boss. 
And the final boss is way easier than he has any business being. You fight him here at this helicopter. It starts to take off, hop up, careful of the blades, and just fire punch. Fire punch. Fire punch. Oh, he gets you. There you go. That's all there is to it. And then there's the president. I guess he was flying the helicopter. I don't know. Doesn't seem to be anybody else in there. But yeah, that's it. Turns out I was a bad enough dude to rescue the president. In the arcade version, it was Ronald Reagan. In this one, it's George Bush. So that's kind of a neat little piece of history. He says, let's go for a burger. And then he's the only one who gets a burger. I don't know what that army of Secret Service guys was doing during this whole adventure, but I feel like um, they weren't doing their job well. So yeah, that's bad dudes. I'm uh, just going to let the credits roll out for anybody who wants to watch the ending, although nothing really happens. And thanks for watching.